This VOD is going to be going up on the Rise Up Gaming YouTube for anybody who misses the stream. So I hope anybody who's here is going to enjoy it. You added more hype videos. Fucking awesome, Jan 10. I'm going to come on over here. Boom. I'm not supposed to be capping Destiny right now, though. So studio mode. Where is my gaming scene? Oh, wait. I don't have that set up on Rise Up Gaming. I just have to come down here. Boom. Boom. Hey. I'm also going to get rid of that for today. All right, so this is OBS. This is what you see when you first open OBS Studio. I've already made a profile and a scene collection, which is easy to do. You just come here and I've gone over how to do scene collections in a YouTube video. Um, I've made one just for, you know, the, the RU webinars. So this is this. This is what you get when you first boot up OBS for the first time. First thing you're going to do before you even look at any of this stuff. For you any look at this you're gonna go to settings and this none of this really matters until you get into uh some really technical stuff projector system tray uh output automatically record while streaming is a thing maybe you want to do if you do things to youtube but i don't worry about that i don't upload to youtube if you're very concerned about accidentally clicking the stop streaming button you can always have it uh you know Show confirmation dialogue when stopping streams. Show confirmation dialogue when starting streams for a little bit of extra security. I don't do that. You can. Automatically check for updates. I want this on. When you first boot up OBS, it's probably going to look like this. This is ugly. Why do you want to look at this? Why Why does anybody want to look at something that's white and bright? So you can, you can just go to theme and turn it to dark. I don't know if there's custom themes yet. There might be people making their own themes, but I have not seen them. So you go down to stream. Yeah, my eyes. Exactly, Jantan. That's the first thing you see. And no wonder people don't like OBS. All they see is this white program and think unprofessional. It's just, it's a program from the 90s, man. It's all white. You can, in fact, make OBS dark. So there's that. Look, it's even more like your precious XSplit. That sucks. Did I say that on a video? I did. I don't like XSplit. Are they still a sponsor of us? I don't think they are, so. All right, so stream tab. This is where you put your stream key, obviously. Pick a server. Generally, I go with the server, server closest to me. Delete the VOD. <laughs> um, I go with the server closest to me, which would be Ashburn, Virginia for me. A good go-to if, like, you're having problems. If you're in the U.S., Texas is a good one to go to. Uh... And if you're in the Europe's, uh, generally Amsterdam, not Frankfurt, Amsterdam is a good server to hitch to as well. Um, obviously in the UK, do London. I think there's a Bristol server. No, just just do London. Trust me. <laughs> you don't want to do anything that's not London when if you're in the UK. South America, I don't know. I don't know very many South American streamers. Obviously, there's a huge language barrier there. Um, they don't teach English a lot up there. So, Ashburn, Virginia, put your stream key in. You have Stockholm. That, that will work just fine. That's um, my saying, which recommended servers more. If you don't know what server to pick, pick one of those three. It usually works. Um, there used to be a tracker built into OBS. I don't know where it is anymore. Let's see. I'm not going to browse on camera. That'd be bad. Twitch server test. I think it's actually built into Twitch Inspector now, isn't it? Let me see. This, this Twitch Inspector thing's pretty new, pretty cool. Now it doesn't seem as if Stream Inspector has that yet. So, Twitch has this now. It was a plugin of the old OBS. Yeah, it was. Um, Twitch has this new thing, stream.twitch.tv. It gives you recommended broadcast settings. Don't use these. D don't use these at all. These are all wrong and terrible. Why is 720p 60 FPS the same as 1080p 30 FPS? That's not how that scales. That is not how that scales, guys. Do not follow these technical specs. Don't do it. They are bad. 
and Twitch should feel bad for even recommending 6,000 kilobits for 1080p60. There, there is... Okay, so going from 30 to 60 FPS literally doubles your bitrate to maintain the same quality. Okay, so saying that 5,000 is perfectly fine for 30 FPS 1080p, which it's not. It should be 6,200 um, for perfectly acceptable. Maybe at 25 FPS, this is acceptable. I've done that math. So 5,000 to 35 FPS or 30 FPS. How does that translate to 6,000 to 60 FPS? You need to double this to be able to do this same quality at 60 FPS. Unless you're doing some shenanigans, which most people don't know how to do. Nor want to do, because it requires like a $1,000 computer. Sorry, $10,000 computer. Someone can't do math. Yeah, no, this is all wrong. 3,000 bitrate for 480p? Yeah, no. This is actually wrong even too. This one's too high. And I guess it's all right. I'm streaming at 6,000 to 720p right now. Um, 3,500 is the sweet spot for, uh, 720p 30. And then 6,000 is about good for 720p 60. 5,000 would be perfectly fine. 1 plus 1 equals 42, yeah. So, don't, don't, don't listen to this. At all. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna go to Output and OBS. After you've already put in your stream key, that's like the first thing you should do. You can get that on your dashboard. I'm not going to show you because then you'll have my stream key and then I'll have to change everything. If you don't really know what you're doing, you can leave it like this. You're like, I, I want my, my bitrate to be 60 million. It won't even let me go that high. It won't let me go to 60 million. That makes me sad. Uh, you can also choose where things record, what recording format. We're going to play with that in a second because once you go from simple to advanced, it resets all your settings. So, thing I'm going to want you to uncheck. I'm going to want you to uncheck and first and for streaming server and coding settings. That's going to be the first thing you're going to check. So, your bitrate matters a lot on whether or not on your internet and whether or not you have transcode options. Internet, you could do a test. We can go to something like, this is kind of my go-to. I don't trust speednet or speedtest.com because it is flash-based and we all know how flash-based this thing works. So I can do test my.net. You click test my internet combined. We're probably gonna drop a couple frames here while I test my internet. And it, it downloads random empty packets to your computer and then re-uploads them and deletes them off your computer for these tests. So we're gonna let this run its test real quick. And this is probably the most accurate tool I've used for finding my internet speed. And my speeds are probably gonna be trash because I'm streaming right now. So because I'm streaming, my download is half of what it usually is. And my upload is a quarter of what it usually is because I'm using about three thirds of my upload. But that is the best way to get your upload speed. So I have a 2.5. This is actually a perfect example. I have pretty crappy internet. I have 2.5 megabit up. So you got to take that into consideration for what you're doing for the rest of your stream. So you have 2.5 megabit up. You have other people in the house, yada, yada. You should probably use about 75% of that when you stream. So we're going to just say, let's put this at 1800. So 1800 bit rate. If you have a good computer, you can keep going. If you don't have a good computer, just stop here. Just, just stop here. You don't, you don't need to do anything else really. Um, set your keyframe interval to two because that is what Twitch wants. And depending on how good your computer is, you can mess with this if you so desire. This is the CPU usage preset. So the the slower you make this, the more CPU this is going to use. But it's going to increase quality but marginally. It's going to be a very small boost in quality. Um, but it's noticeable when you start tick when, and when you stream at medium all the time and then for a game that sucks, you have to, you know, go to ultra fast. You're going to notice it. This ultra fast 
when you see the blockiness, the big blocks on an artifact in the video, I, I hate to use this, but if you watch Bijou stream last night, uh, high motion scenes, you see really big blocks in the video, right? Not, not tiny little pixels. You see really big blocks. Well, changing this preset is going to help get rid of those at lower bit rates. Um, but it does come at the cost of more CPU usage. So if you have crappy internet, but a really good computer, or you have a, an all right computer and just use a capture card to stream from like consoles or something, changing this setup, this, this setting can help you. On Rise of Gaming, I use the fast preset because we're streaming at 60 FPS. On my own channel, I use medium. I'm probably gonna go down to fast myself now that I'm streaming at 900p. Um, so we're gonna say that I have an all right laptop. It's got an i7, I stream from the PS4. We're gonna set this to fast, right? And then you go to profile, set it to main, cause that's what Twitch wants. You can set this to high. This is going to cause a little bit more CPU usage. You're going to have better quality, but it's going to be more unfriendly to mobile users because um, a lot of phones can't handle this high profile. Hi, Dana. How you doing, love? So if you don't give, if you, you know your demographic, you don't have, don't have a lot of mobile viewers, uh, you're not seeking to expand that market, you can use high. Twitch recommends main. And that's pretty much all you have to do here. <laughs> Dana, Dana, you're interrupting a webinar. I know sometimes where I should stop. Sometimes. All right, so this is pretty much done. We're going to say that we're going to be streaming at 1800 bit rate. All right. Uh, so that gives us headroom for other people in the house and playing... Playing online games, if we so choose, since we know. We're assuming that this guy, you know, He's streaming up fast. He's on a crappy laptop, but it's all right. It's an all right crappy laptop. He's going to be streaming from his console with a capture card. So we're going to go down to audio. We're going to put this the 4,800 kilohertz. You have to, or anything you do in here, really, you have to restart OBS after you do so. Now, the rest of these settings really matter on whether or not you have a normal mic, a normal USB mic, and just using desktop audio, or you're using a mixer like myself. I use a mixer, so I have to put this to mono, or else you're only going to hear me on one ear. But most people are on a USB microphone. So you're going to say, hey, the channels are stereo. I'm going to go to desktop. Desktop audio device. This is where all your sounds are coming from for your game, for your OBS. We're going to say this is speakers because that's my de default audio device. Um, and then we're going to go to a microphone. And this is going to be your USB microphone or whatever the hell your microphone is. For me, that is going to be microphone for boom. Uh, and then... These sources will show up on every scene, pretty much. So if I go down here, you see there's the music from the desktop audio. There's the mic. Um, since I'm doing this in mono, most microphone or in stereo, most microphones are uh, mono. S USB microphones often knock themselves to fill in a stereo field with both ears, but a lot of mono microphones don't. So you have to come into here. This is the problem Rev was having on his stream the other day um, after he got the new the mic. You go to Mixer, you click this cog right here, and you're going to say on my mic, down mix that the mono. That's going to be done, and then it will fill both ears, even though you're streaming in stereo. That's pretty much it here. Oh, geez, Dana. I hope you're feeling all right, dear. You know, if you ever need to, Dana, you can just come down here for a weekend. Just rem just let me know before you appear so I can pretend to clean the house. Then we get to the fun part, which is video, which is the part that everybody fucks up for some reason. Because nobody understands video. They're like, oh, the more pixels, I'm going to set this to 4K. 4096 by, by 2160 per Yeah, I'm going to stream at 4K, man. No, get the fuck out. Uh, so since we're at 1800 bit rate, eh, I'm going to calculate that. That's going to be about 480p. So Or 540. We can do 540 at 800, 1800. So 540p, 30 FPS, because if you play at a console, you're probably limited to 30 FPS. Also, 30 FPS, or going away from 30 FPS actually requires you to raise your bit rate to get better image quality. So I would just stick the 30 FPS unless, you know, you know what you're doing. 
and you're willing to spend the time just tweaking settings, sitting here recording yourself and looking at those recordings and then going back and tweaking settings to make things look more. That's all OBS is. That's all XSplit is too, but most people who play use XSplit aren't smart enough to figure that out. Um, they just do the recommended settings and then their stream looks like trash or their computer runs like trash. Uh, and XSplit unfortunately doesn't let you let stop holding its hand for a lot of things, which is why I use OBS. You just want donuts. I do. I want Dana's donuts, guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to set the downscale filtering to Lanxos. The downscale filter is basically, so my base resolution is 1080p because that's the size of this monitor. Um, but in order to fit an OBS, or when I transmit an OBS, the transmission is only 960 by 440, so it's squishing it down a little bit. So the Lanxos filter helps smooth out those pixels. Those pixels, so it doesn't look squished. It, some pixels, because you lose detail when you squish things down, and it helps smooth that out and regain some of that detail. Lanxos filtering is pretty much required for anything that looks good, but you can, if you're having, uh, this is all GPU based, by the way. If you're having problems doing Lanxos, try by cubic, by linear. It kind of tells you what it does. Fastest, but blurry if scaling, sharpering, scaling, 16 samples, 32 samples. 32 is obviously better. But if you're having problems because you have a weaker GPU, this is the only thing. This is the only thing in OBS that is reliant on your GPU. Pretty much any GPU can do Lanxos, except for mobile GPUs. Oh Christ! <laughs> right. Um, so we're gonna stream at 540p because our bitrate's so low. Hotkeys. We'll go over this later, but this is how I set up the switch to scene. Um, so say I have a couple scenes. Let's just do this. Boom. 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 Settings. Hotkeys. So, oh, they have their own section now. That's kind of nice. Um, oh, no, they don't. There's, there's just empty scenes. So this is how I do this. So this would be... Oh, I can't fucking do anything. Control Q. Control W. Control E. Control R. Those were how I'd be switching be between scenes for things. You click apply. Then you go to advanced. This is... Not really anything. Um, so the default. He knows what he's doing. Well, yeah, there's a reason I'm doing this. Um, general process priority. If you don't care if your game lags, you just want your stream to be smooth, no stuttering. Um, this isn't a guarantee to help that. But if you set this above normal or high... It basically tells your computer that, hey, OBS is the most important application I'm running. Make sure that it gets all the resources it needs. Fuck everything else. So this will generally help with that, but this will make your... If you're on a crappy laptop, you're gaming on it at the same time as you're streaming, you're already having bad gaming issues, this will fuck you up. So leave that at normal. You can put it at above normal if you're capturing console and just want your computer to focus on streaming. What up, Aegon? Uh, auto monitoring device. I don't use this. This is a new feature in OBS. I don't know what the. Let's fucking let's fucking try it. Hold on. Um, let's put the output to speakers. Apply. So auto audio monitoring will let you go. So you set this audio monitoring device. You can go into Mixer. It will let you listen to your audio sources into your headphones. Nobody else can hear them. They just go into your headphones, right? So I can say, I want to monitor my mic. Um, there's monitor only, which means they won't hear what you're listening to. And then there's monitor and output, which means that what I'm listening to will then go to the stream. This is really useful. This is really useful for console captures or uh, web browser captures or media captures that you don't usually get to hear, but the stream hears. So this is really useful for that. So let's say I want to monitor only. Is this going to let me even... Hello? 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 Oh, wow. The, the delay's, delay's not, not too bad. bad. It's, it's a little disorienting, but not as disorienting as I would have thought. You guys can't hear it, but here, hold on. There's there's that. There's the little bit of audio delay. You hear that little... The, the echo, that is the difference between me actually talking and me hearing it on OBS, it's actually not too bad, surprisingly. So I'm going to turn that off because fuck that. 
Bum, 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 bum. Can hear it a little. Yeah, it's kind of low on my mixer. Uh, so it's it's a couple. Yeah, it's a couple millis like maybe twenty milliseconds delay. It's not bad actually. So we're gonna go back over to advanced. Uh, there's really nothing else you gotta touch here. I recommend putting this at seven oh nine, putting that at full, uh, leaving this at direct X eleven basically. Leaving this at MV12, because that's what everything likes to see. So bind to IP. If your computer has multiple network adapters, like Bishu's computer has two Ethernet ports on it, you could say, hey, I want it to go, and you have both of them plugged in. One of them is plugged to our internal network. One's going to the internet. Um, you can say, hey, I want to make sure OBS uses the adapter that's actually connected to the internet. So there's some new networking code implemented in OBS Studio, which you can click right here which it does some optimizations to the network code in the into the uh, the program and the big thing it does is it enables low latency mode i don't suggest using this low latency mode basically puts obs at the bottom of your stack for your network stuff so it's basically last priority to send things out into the interwebs which is not something you want when you're streaming but it's useful when you have very limited bandwidth and are playing a mo like an MMO or a MOBA or something and need the lowest ping possible. So there is that. That is the basic settings for OBS. We've gone over that. We're going to stream at 540p, 1800 kilobits per second at the fast CPU preset. So now we got to set up our scene. So as you saw before, I just clicked this, this arrow to add scenes. We already got four scenes, so we should be good. I'm going to name them. So you can right click and click rename. To type something there we're just going to call this intro oh i have caps lock on intro this is pretty self-explanatory we're going to call this full cam this is the scene where i usually sit here with a cam it would be this scene usually and any of my other things this is what i call the full cam screen you can call it imag which would be the technical term for it i'm gonna set this to just fade And then we're going to call this one gaming and we're going to call this one BRB. Chris, thank you for the host. You fucking sexy. Fuck I'm getting a little dry in the mouth, so give me a second. Talking a lot and talking fast, man. Hey, God, thank you for the host. Yeah, host now, guys, while I'm on the on a little bit of a breather. Ah. How you doing, Chris? Sorry to take you for the host. Carmich, thank you for the host. Running more errands, just got home. Dana, thank you for the host. Rip. We may or may not raid today, Chris. I don't know. All right. Part two. I'll separate this as an episode. This is part two of the webinar. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> The magic with the magic of video editing, this is a whole separate video. Yeah. So we set up our scenes. We got we got some basic scenes here, right? So intro. I'm gonna go here. And this is just where you put all your interest screen stuff. So all my stuff is in images, right? So I'm gonna add an image. We're gonna call this intro screen. Because there's only one image. A lot of people have more than one image. Then you just name things, other things. You name whatever the fuck you want. I mean, that one's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to go to Cup 2017 because that's where I have all this stuff stored. And there's my Rise Up starting soon screen. Boom! Look at that. Look at that. It's done. You'll notice that I have this little box here, right? Well, I do this handy little thing from a tool that I was given um, that basically lets me pull box art from the Twitch API. If anybody's interested in it, I can link it later. 
but we're going to make a browser source. We're going to call this box art. What is the res on the box art again? I don't remember. Studio mode starting soon. Box art. It is 272 by 380. I'll leave it at 30 FPS. I want to see if it works in XSplit. I mean, it works in anything that holds a web source, but why the fuck are you using XSplit? Uh, let's see. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Box art copy. Twitch box art. It just loads an HTML file. Boom. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to line this up right about here. Is that lined up? One more pixel. Come on. One more pixel. Boom. And there's my box art. I think my music is out. Music! Music! Oh, uh, where'd you go? Wow. My browser, my, my Chrome just crashed. Seems like it is forever! Chrome? Chrome, please. Wow. I know, Chris. That's why I'm redesigning your shit. Oh, and Jantan, that weird video resolution I was talking about at the beginning of the stream. Um, That's all of Coachella's video screens. I think Flash Player just crashed. Thanks, YouTube, for still using Flash. So there's that. That will update when I change games. So if I change to Destiny... Um, it doesn't auto update. Well, it does, but it doesn't auto, it doesn't auto update. We're just going to say it doesn't. All you got to do is, uh, double click to open properties. Just a reminder. That's how you do it with all scenes. If you want to edit the properties of a, of a, a source, just double click it. You don't have to right click properties and do all that stuff. Double click it. and It will open up the property screen and then just click. Okay. Again, and it will refresh it. And that's my interest screen. But, you know, what if I want my alerts on my interest screen? People are coming in through hosting before the... Is that one on GitHub? It is. It is called... It is called uh, Twitch Box Art. What up, Clark? Now, I will never show anybody the magic that I use for my personal channel, which is giving me the titles and stuff. There. I think my tea should be cooled by now. Data, I'm finally drinking those tea things you brought when you came and visited. Oh my god, they're good. Ah, such good tea. Alright, so. There's that, but I want to add my alerts to my starting screen, so I'm going to go add another browser source. Easy enough. Um, I need... Let's grab Rise Up Gaming's one, since we seem to be making this a Rise Up Gaming themed... Thing. Where is my alerts? The peppermint bark? Yes. Yes. It's so fucking good. Just gonna put the link there. You can make it any res you want. Where I'm, I usually just leave them at 800 by 600. It doesn't really matter. 1920 by 1080. Whatever you want to do. Eh, let's do 1280 by 720. Bus 720. And I recommend putting it at 60 FPS. This doesn't, even though you're broadcasting at 30 FPS, this actually makes the web browser run better for some reason. What aren't you showing off? Uh, I'll show you in a second. So that's that's stream alerts. The thing I'm not showing off is Cup 2017. How I do this. Boom. Yeah. And there's alerts. What do you know? I kind of want Capogen on this as well. So let me grab my Capogen because I don't use the one on the schedule because I fucking... Isn't that an API call? It is, technically. But I have a program that does it for me. Where is my Capogen? Select all. Boom. God, this URL is so long. For those who don't know, we use Capogen to display the emotes that come up on screen above me and behind me. That's just another browser source. 
This one you set to the size of your canvas, so it'd be 1920 by 1080. And then I put in this obnoxiously long link. <laughs> put it at 60 FPS. And boom. Now I'll have Kappa. Somebody spam me some uh, some emotes so we can show this off for the webinar. Somebody spam some emotes. Ah, I'm looking at you, Dantan. There we go. Just little, little emotes. Thank you for that example, class. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I can always rely on Jantan to give me emotes. So that's our starting sin screen. I really nothing else to add to it. You can add countdown timers, which you can get into with HTML scripts and all the kinds of things. We'll go over that later, how to do countdown timers and stuff. But this is just basics. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> No, it's go Oh, wait, it's still on the scene. So this is going to be our full cam screen. This is going to be the screen we go to after our intro. So we got we to gotta add another image. Full screen. Boom. Add another image. Go to browser. Find the image you want to upload, which is going to be, are you chatting for me? Boom. This is going on YouTube. Yes, this is all going on the, the Rise Up Gaming YouTube. And here's my chatting screen. Look, we're done. We're done. I don't need to do anything else. No, we're not, we're not done. We're not done. So I'm going to add another browser source. I want to add my alerts back in on this one, right? This is going on MySpace, yes. I want to add my alerts back in because I want to sit on this screen for a little bit. But I want to know when people are hosting and following and subbing. Um, so I'm about to go add another one. But before you click OK, you'll notice that there's an ad existing. So you don't have to keep remaking the source. You can just go down here. I believe it's browser source one. I forgot to name it. Um, browser source one. That's our alerts. Cool. Now I can put them anywhere I want. I'm going to put them over chat. Boom. Is this the stuff you're working on the other day on my stream? Yeah. This is, this is, uh, this is, ex I made this for the examples. Hello, UFC 345. Thank you for the host. Hey, look, it worked as intended. <laughs> um, I kind of made this box so you can have chat here. So maybe we should set up chat. So to set up chat, where I usually go for chat is I go to night dev, which is just nightdev.com right here. And he has this thing called cap chat, which we're going to install for OBS. Ignore this window because OBS comes with the browser already installed now. If you install that version, you should. We've already been talking about browsers. So you're gonna click next. You're gonna put in the, the the game for this one or the username for this. This is Rise Up Gaming. Chat fade if you want chat to disappear after a while. We're not gonna do that because I only put it on this full cam screen. Chat length, leave it at the default 30. Show bots, sure. No, actually, because the Rise Up bot spam shit. Um, if you have a large channel, you may not want to enable this. So leave that off. Chat theme, none. You go to next. You can grab this URL. Boom. Copy it. We won't deal with this for now. And then close it. And then boom, we can go back to OBS. I'm going to add another browser source. Call this chat. Put that right in there. I actually don't know what the res of that square is. So I'm going to open up Photoshop real quick. Can open up Photoshop real quick because I don't know what the resolution of that square is. I messed with step four to up the the size. Let's see, talking screen. All right, what's the property is? 840 by 472. All right. 840 by 472. And put it over there. Look, chat. 
We're going to make it a little shorter because I want it to end right there. So let's try 8.30. Now? Let's do 800. Oh, no, that's width, not fucking height. Duh. 8.40. And let's try 4.62. You notice that chat size is a little small, right? So, what you're gonna do, do this is kind of just something you should remember. Take a screenshot of me doing it, whatever, to up the chat size. Inside of here, I'm just gonna grab all of this. This is all the recommended crap, right? This is all the stuff they give you in line four. Bunch of fucking nonsense that nobody understands, right? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to the one that says hashtag chat underscore box. Usually says something like font family. You're going to basically want to put this in here. And then this one, this 21 pixels, this is what you up to up the size. See? Now there's that. I'm going to have to figure out this. This might be a clipping mask or something. So basically, you... What you want to do is you want to copy the stuff from step four of setting up the cap chat. And under chat box, you're going to want to put font family Arial, font size 21 pixels. From the cabinet. A lot of uh, referred cabinets, Carmich, have things like HDMI outs and stuff. Yeah. So I can even make this, let's make this 30 for the sake of this. Thirty. You get that every time you refresh the source, unfortunately, but it will go away as you fill up the chat. Yeah, there's usually custom made uh cabinet skarmage. Yeah, probably not. But we're going to leave it at. I think, for example, King of Thalions is actually a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to leave this at 24 because the line spacing gets fucked up. And I don't really know how to fix that right now. I'm not going to deal with it. And then I'm going to go grab a webcam real quick. I know you were talking about goth when you were talking about that goth speakeasy it's really cool it's a really cool concept he's not the first one to do something like that hyper rpg does things like that but it's really cool to see more non-traditional gaming things in our industry i've been a streamer for six years so seeing that sort of stuff just makes me so happy it's stuff i've wanted to do for like the last four all right so my webcam is a more advanced concept that we will go over later this is your standard C920. Lindy, thank you for the host. And Karmich, thank you for the follow. I don't know if the alert went off with that with that when I filled up. So I'm going to just, you know, grab this webcam. We're going to put it at the top of this uh, here thing. I'm going to plug it in my computer. It's going to do the thing. Now I have a USB cable strapped across the front of my desk gonna go here now that we have now that we have a webcam we're gonna go here gonna go add a video capture device i only have one right now so we're gonna call it just video capture device and it's probably gonna be a logitech c920 i have a bunch in here because i have a bunch of different webcams and things god the white balance is so terrible hold on let me now before i do this i will actually what's the speakeasy uh Think of like an old school speakeasy during Prohibition days. Aegon, uh, King Kingathalion, who's like the biggest Destiny streamer and one of the bigger streamers on Twitch, uh, set up a room in the basement of his house that's like hidden behind a bookcase. It's got a beer tap. It's got an arcade game. You're required to have like 
uh, a blazer on, and it's just got like a speakeasy sort of vibe, and it's just a, it's beer and bros basically. And it's a new show he's doing on his on his channel. It's really fucking cool. You should, I I recommend you go check it out, Aegon, just for the coolness factor of it. Um, so here we have a webcam. It looks like shit the first time you plug it in. It also is a fucking square. Look at that. That's a fucking square. It's a fucking square. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go click custom on this resolution FPS type. And we're just gonna set it to 1920 by 1080 because why not? We're gonna set it to 2997 because you should always set things to 2997 or 5994 when you're doing only video across the internet. Video format, the rest of this can stay. Whatever the fuck it is. Okay. And then usually you're gonna wanna disable the video capture device's audio since you have your own mic. Oh yeah. We have a dedicated HVAC, uh, not an HVAC, but I have a dedicated fucking, uh... Yeah, unless you're EU standard, which then you should be using 5 or 49.94 or 24.94 because fucking pal. So, boom. There, that's sized right there. A little bit, a little bit more. I'm gonna have to fix this overlay just a tad bit. I'm going to have to crop this a little bit. So now I get to show you guys filters. So what we're going to do, first off, before we do filters, we're going to correct whatever this color thing that's going on is, right? Most Watch Deck webcams have this problem the first time you plug them in. So I'm just going to open up. Probably, yeah. I don't know nothing about HVAC. I just have an air conditioner in our window. Since we have two streamers that sit in this room, it's kind of needed. So you're going to open up the properties to your Logitech webcam, because most of you are probably using a Logitech webcam, and you're going to click Configure Video. It's going to bring up this settings panel. It'll appear in your taskbar, too. I recommend you, like, pin this to taskbar if you're using this. So you can turn autofocus on if you want. I leave it off because it's my camera doesn't move generally. Pull out the zoom. Sound doesn't matter because you're not using the sound from this. You can go to advanced settings now. All right, Jantan. You're going to turn off right light and you're going to turn off auto gain because my God, those are terrible. And this white balance thing. White balance is a problem on the C920s because they like to reset when they lose power. Uh, for some reason. I don't know why. So you're going to be in this panel a lot moving this white balance bar back to the center that's actually the only problem with this web here right now is white balance but we're gonna turn down the exposure a little bit and then the messing with this sort of stuff requires a little bit of camera knowledge but i just suggest you play with it till it looks i don't know like real like a real picture it's not close enough that's still really harsh on the color so we're gonna play with this a little bit i can do this fairly quickly because i've been doing it for a long time but Learning to play with this webcam is probably one of the hardest things to do while streaming. And this is why I don't use a webcam anymore. I use a real camera. Yeah, I can never... This webcam also doesn't like our purple. It's always blue. All right. So that's going to be good enough. Like, can I ever make this purple? Is this ever going to be purple? I don't think so. It's never going to be purple, so that's good enough for now. And now you'll see that we're, we're cutting off that little purple, that cool little purple bar that I set up at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to this video capture device, we're gonna click, right click, click filters, click this plus button down here, and click crop and pad. Okay, just name it crop and pad. I'm gonna cut off the top. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to just tick up little by little. A little bit more. Boom. That's good. Yeah, I'm going to have to make the shield a separate asset. Whatever. 
Let's do that now. Boom. So I'm going to turn off basically everything, but those two. So I want these to be above it, so I just made this entire top bar a separate asset. So images, shield, shield, ready to go. Boom, now it's on top of everything. And now we have a basic, hi guys, screen. There's no web, there's no green screen on the screen right now because I'm too lazy to chroma key this. But if you wanted to chroma key it, obviously you want nothing but, let's see if I can balance it on top of the current camera. I'd have to crop off that edge a little bit. But when you go into video capture device, you go into filters again, you need to click add, chroma key, boom, it's chroma keyed. Look at that. And it's cropped. Boom! Look, guys! And I'm chroma keyed. It's that simple in OBS. That fucking simple. Now we're on our game. Now, now we're pretty much we're pretty much done here, right? There's not much else I can do here. So we're gonna move on to gaming. So gaming is pretty easy. It's pretty much the same thing. You can add in all your sources and all that other stuff. Um, say you're playing a game. Well, first off, yeah. Say you're playing a game, so you're gonna do game capture. You're gonna click create now. I would do capture a specific window unless you're playing in full screen, which you're probably not playing in full screen if you're streaming um, because there's too many PTSD issues with that. So don't play in full screen. Capture a specific window. Then you select any window from this list. Let's capture that. Boom. Notice it still stays black. So usually you gotta tap back into the game before it will show up. So don't freak out if you have nothing but a black screen when you do your game capture. Tap back into the game, and it should show up in OBS, right? So that's our game capture. We're going to add back in our video capture device. Let's make this smaller. There's our webcam. And, of course, you know, we got to add our logo to our scene. So we're going to add another image. We're going to create a new image. We're going to go find an image. And where is my Rise Up Gaming logo? Where is my logo? Are you too? I don't even know where my Rise Up Gaming logo is anymore. I have too many things. Here, we're just gonna call this our logo. This is our logo. This is the logo, the thing that you know you put in in your screen that says, "Hey, this is my stream. You can't steal it. It's my stream. You can tell because that's my logo." You obviously, it, it's like full on. It's obstructing whatever's behind it, right? So you want to click properties. You want to go to filters. We're gonna add just a color correction. We're not gonna actually color correct anything, but you get an opacity slider with color correction. So you can turn that down so you can see through it now. And you can do that with any image. It doesn't just have to be your watermark. You can, filters, filters in OBS are really cool. I suggest you play around with them. I'm not gonna go over all of them today because that would be insane because there's a lot. So now we have our watermark. We'll add back in our browser sources, which would be our alerts, which are gonna go right there. We'll shrink them down a little bit. Put a, I just put them in the center screen. You put them where the fuck you want. Whatever makes sense. Don't, don't remove that. And Kappa Gen is back in. You actually know about HVAC, huh, Filthy? Awesome. So Cap Chat's back in. You can add BitBoss in, which Rise Up Gaming people use. You got any browser source in, anything you want. Don't do gaudy overlays, because God, do they look disgusting. Don't do it. Don't do it. Gaudy overlays are disgusting. I don't want to see a giant big orange box around your entire fucking thing while you're playing a game. Just looks stupid. Don't do it. This is not a design stream, so I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, But say I'm capturing from console, right? I'm going to actually have to go over here and disable it in this OBS so I can capture things. 
gaming. Deactivate. Boom. Okay. So I'm streaming from console. So usually you have a capture card, right? What the fuck? The webcam has moved. Why are you freaking out about your testing webcam, Bam? I don't know. So you're going to want to add another video capture device, right? Because it's going through a capture card. That's a video capture device. We're going to call that capture card. Capture card, capture card. For me, I use a Black Magic capture card. And if you use Black Magic, you'll notice you'll get like Dead Link and Black Magic WDM capture. And it's fucking confusing, right? So you just kind of pick the one that works. Black Magic cards in particular are very, uh, very touchy about what settings you use. So you got to use everything. It won't auto detect them. You got to use. The exact settings they want. Is that not the one? Is it wanting to use deck link nowadays? No, WD Capture 2. I have multiple of these. So hey, look, it uh, it caught uh, captured Destiny. And to do what I just did, guys, you saw me moving these around. You can hold Control when you have a source selected. And the up and down arrows to move them in the order. Or you can click these up and down arrows. But I find... Uh, no, my uber expensive card is right here. I'm not using it right now. I, I'm currently in a big rigmarole of reorganizing the layout of the computer's egg on. So this card is a data path capture card, which will automatically capture things. But most gaming cards... Most gaming consumer capture cards uh, won't automatically detect your settings, so you got to do it yourself. So 1080p, this is at 1080i 60, right? If you deal with interlaced signals, which you do if you go to like a TV or old school games, you're gonna deal with interlaced signals. So this is a good idea, a good thing to deal with. So if it's at 1080i 60 or 5994, you're gonna want to set it to 1080p, 2997 or 30 or whatever it's at. You can leave pretty much all this other stuff the same, except for audio. Oops. Audio tech. Um, except for audio output mode. So at audio capture only, you have to use this OBS mixer and the audio monitoring to be able to hear what everybody else is doing. So I'm actually going to test this out. We're going to leave this at capture audio only, right? So I have my listening audio device, right? Actually, this doesn't work on my stream because of the way things are set up with the mixer. Um, but normally, you'd be able to leave it like that. You'd be able to go to mixer and you'd be able to monitor the capture card with this. But because I use a mixer, it doesn't really work that way. So I'm going to actually go into capture card. And this is how you would do it if you use a mixer or you don't want to use the auto monitoring. You go here, you click desktop, uh, output desktop audio. So now it just directly outputs that as a, as a audio source. You don't really have volume control at that point, so you'd want to control it through your console or something. So you'll notice if I turn this on. See that that weird line shit? See those weird lines? That's from the interlacing. That's what happens when you interlace video. Thankfully, OBS now has a handy dandy deinterlacing de tool, and I just put it at yet F2X because my computer can handle it. If your computer has a little bit of stuttering issues with that. Play it around with it, you know, and there you go. You have a capture card. Um, I use Blackmagic. I can't help you guys with Elgato or Avermedia. I know they require you to use their software. Blackmagic just works with OBS, which is why I use it. Um, along with Datapath, because Datapath just acts like a webcam. Yes, I'm manhandling a $1,000 capture card for no reason, because I can and you'll notice that this webcam is faster than that webcam. That's the difference between the 60 FPS webcam and the 30 FPS and the C920. So. so, yeah. There's that. That's pretty much done. This webcam keeps just going over more and more and more. Stay. <laughs> Boom. That's done. And we go to BRB, we set up our BRB screen. Which would be another image. BRB. You'll notice I have another box art here, so we're going to add in our browser source. That's the box art. I'm 
I don't have an AV Meteor capture card, so I can't test Aegon. I think you may be right. I think Avram, I think Elgato is the one that requires you to go through their stupid software uh, in order to do things. I want an Avram Media capture card just to play around with them. They're good people. Uh, and they are very well aware that they are a, you know, not a professional capture card, but they still do things the right way. So... And then there's our BRB screen. Then you'd set up a, a, a see you later screen if you wanted to. And you'd be pretty much done. You can add any screen scenes you want. A thing we've noticed. A thing we've noticed with uh, OBS Studio is the more scenes you have, the laggier your shit's going to get. So if there's things that you're using like once in a while that are super intensive, so say this BRB image, I want to unload it when not showing. So when I go away, it unloads that image and it's no longer cached but it will recache it here. I suggest doing that for scenes you don't use a lot. Uh, unload those images, because it will help with your lag later on. Um, don't keep them as global sources. Uh, because the more scenes you get, the more that OBS is going to keep in memory, and the laggier it's going to get if you don't have a lot of memory. Keeps all your scenes loaded. Uh, you can tell it not to. It's just defaulted now. In OBS 1, it wasn't defaulted. Boom. So, yeah, there you go. And you'll notice the lines are gone now that you've de to laced it. Yeah, you have to force it now. It's not forcing. It's clicking a box. Don't make it seem like it's some hard steel thing. Because your average OBS user does not need to unload those sources. It's somebody like me who has... Let's see, where is my collection? Let's see, let's go to my collection. Somebody like me who has like 14 different scenes and a bajillion different browser sources that needs that. Your average OBS user does not need it. Just because I want to do that. That's cool. We'll go over how to do that stinger transition. Oh, the cool thing with OBS Studio, which I guess this is a cool time, time to show off. I don't suggest anybody do this because this is stupid. Cool thing with OBS Studio, Aegon, that I've been doing lately is I can build a cam scene. I'm, I'm just going to bring this over here. Okay, so let's pop out of studio mode. I can, or not pop out of studio mode. I can build this scene called cam, right? And this is where I put all my stuff. So BitBoss is there, video capture device. Uh, let's put my image up there for my music bar, let's say. So I can do all this in a scene, and then I can come over to gaming, and I can load that scene inside of a scene. That's what I've been doing lately. I've been putting scenes inside of scenes. It's really fun and cool. And a cool way to handle things like that. Uh-huh, let's turn that all off again. What's this capture device? Oh, that's probably the C920. So yeah, and what's up, Max? Sorry, we were I was in a thought train, so. Put this back over on ah, go away. Go back to that monitor. And that is the basics of OBS. That's pretty much our webinar. And okay, let's let's go over here. So we have this raid video. Turn it off. Um, the way that I do videos in OBS, because media scenes are broken, is I actually <laughs> make them in- STOP PLAYING! I actually load- download videos, I created an HTML script, and now I can hear them. But I think with mixers, with the mixer you can actually just have this be a video source and you can auto- Let's try it out. I'ma try it out, okay. Let's see. Where is it? Media source. Okay. I'm going to load a video, which... Let's see. Going to load a video. Boom. I can't hear anything. You guys can't hear anything right now. I got to go into settings. I got to reset that up. Yep, that's okay. So I want to monitor this media source. So I'm going to do. Hey. 
And now I can monitor it through my headphones. You guys are hearing it because I use a mixer, but if you weren't using a mixer, you'd just be hearing the source in your headphones, and the stream would be hearing it at whatever volume it's at. Oh, I can control the value with this. Nice. Okay, I'm done with that. But that's really cool. So that's now fixed. Just use audio monitoring for being able to listen to media sources. I'm loving more and more how OBS is starting to think like a professional switcher. And I say this because I use a professional switcher on a daily basis at work. Hold on. What am I looking at? The wall dudes are going to hate me. This is my show opening. How do you do the HTML thing? Don't worry about it. Just use just use audio mixer. Use the audio mixer. Use the mixer monitoring for the media source. I should probably transition my shit. Nah, I'm not going to because my shit works. <laughs> and the whole mixer thing. I gotta see how that reacts with the mixer thing. But that's that. We're done. That is OBS Basics with Bam on Rise Up Gaming. I hope everybody enjoyed. We are gonna be switching over and playing game titles. Let me link that right now. Follow the instructions. That's how you set it up. Oh. Need titles now? Nyaba! It's mine. <laughs> Alright. So we're pretty much done with that. I'm going to hop over here. Thank you everybody for watching. We're going to hop over and play some video games now. This webcam can go the fuck away.